In this section, we'll analyze structural design patterns in Node.js beginning with the proxy pattern. The proxy pattern allows us to control access to an object. The original definition by the gang of four defines the pattern as provide a surrogate or placeholder for another object to control access to it. This surrogate or placeholder is then used to access the original object. But in doing so, the placeholder is able to augment and change the contents of the original object. This is often needed to introduce a virtualization layer between the object and the consumer. When the consumer requests access to the object, it does so through the proxy and the proxy then governs and modifies the data as needed by acting as a wrapper. Typically, you would use this pattern when you need to optimize or pre-process data when the consumer accesses it. This could involve caching remotely accessed data, writing loggers, encrypting data, simulating private and inaccessible properties and validation among other things. The important thing to note is that the interface offered to the consumer remains in line and consistent with the original object. You can generally apply a proxy like behavior by either directly augmenting an object during access or through composable wrappers, which are better and safer because they do not modify the original object and are proxies in the most genuine sense of the word. To implement proxies in Node.js, we can use the proxy API, which was introduced in ES 2015 and has been available in Node.js ever since version 6. So let's look at two examples. In our first example, we have an object with a few existing properties, as you can see here. What we would like to do is create a special version of this object where the data is encrypted using a password. Additionally, any new data that is added to the object should be auto encrypted as well. In simple words, we need to intercept setter calls to the object and encrypt the data before setting into an object. I'll begin by using npm to install a package called Cryptor. We are using Cryptor to implement quick and simple encryption and to save time. You could write your own encryption module as well. And this is really immaterial to this project. I'll then create a module called Vault where we'll implement a proxy creator function which will generate a proxy for us. So start by bringing in the Cryptor package first. Then I'll create a function called lock which accepts the original object and a password for encryption. When our object is passed through this function, we would need to encrypt all its contents before generating an initial proxy. I'll thus create a new instance of the Cryptor function using a password that will act like a key to secure our object. Then I'll essentially loop over the properties of the array and we'll generate a new object which contains the encrypted version of the properties. Once we have an encrypted version of the object, we'll return a new proxy object from this function. The proxy API calls for two basic elements, a target or the object that you wish to generate a proxy for and a handler. The handler provides us with a set of traps that allow us to intercept various operations that are performed on the object. And this is where you can augment the data and control how you wish to offer access. For instance, here, when the user sets a new property or tries to modify an existing property on the object, the set trap will be executed. This trap function will provide access to the property and the value that the user is trying to set. So instead of setting the value directly, we'll first run it by our Cryptor modules encrypt function. This will ensure that any value that is set on the object is encrypted and then stored. Now when a property is accessed, the get trap will execute. Here we get the target or the object itself and the key or the property name. So we'll simply return target by a key like so. Make sure you return a value from the traps. I'll now export this object from the vault module. Back in our app.js, we'll bring in the lock function from the vault module. Then I'll create a password for encryption. And we'll create a constant called person where I'll call the lock method to generate a proxy for the object using the password. Now, if I console log this out, you can see all our properties are now encrypted. The important thing here is that this proxy version is a standard JavaScript object with only the insides rewired. For instance, I can add new properties to the object 
just like one would in a regular JavaScript object. And you can see their values have been encrypted as well. I'll quickly write a decrypt function as well, which will produce a read only edition of the object, which will not allow us to add or augment any properties for added security. So back in the vault module, I'll write a function called unlock. Once again, this takes in an object, which in this case will be our encrypted proxy object, and we'll need the same password to unlock. I'll begin in exactly the same way by decrypting the entire object when created. Then we'll return a proxy where I'll configure the set trap to simply throw an error saying this is a read only object. Since the set trap is not returning any data, there is no way to set a value on the decrypted object. And since we have not implemented a get trap, it is left untouched and you can access the object as usual. The same applies for the log function as well, where the get trap doesn't do anything and returns back the data as is. I implemented the get trap simply to demonstrate how it works on the inside. You can modify the data when accessed. For instance, in the get trap, you could set all the returned elements to uppercase using the standard to uppercase method. All right. Let's export this out and back in our app.js, we'll implement unlock like so. And now if we output the object, you can see we are getting our original data back. And if I try to set a property, I will get an error since we have just created a read only version of an object using the proxy API. Besides the get and set traps, the proxy API also offers other traps such as the apply trap, which can be used to get access to arguments and control the execution of a function's insights. You can read more about them on the MDN page for the proxy API. All right, this next example allows us to quickly generate an observable object, which allows us to attach a function, which is executed every time a given object is modified. This kind of behavior is often seen in frameworks like React and Vue, where changes to reactive data properties trigger re-renders on the UI, thus automating and optimizing UI updates. We'll make a function called make reactive, which takes an object and an observer function. We'll then return a proxy object where I'll simply rewire the set trap so that the value is set normally. But in doing so, the external observer function is also executed, passing in the updated key value pair. To use this, I'll simply generate a reactive version of the object and for the observer, we'll simply console log out the value. Now, whenever we try to set values on the object, this function should be executed as an observer who's notified. As you can see, our simple little observer works as expected. Let's summarize now. The proxy pattern allows us to create placeholder wrappers for objects and allows us to externally control access to these objects. The proxy implements the same interface as the original object and thus offers a seamless experience to the consumer. To implement the pattern, we can use the proxy API. The proxy API implements traps that allow us to hook into various kinds of access types and these can then be used to augment how the object responds. Proxies are great for implementing a kind of middleware mechanism and can be used to offer caching, logging, encryption, and other kinds of augmented functionality as a virtualized proxy.